What's up guys? Okay, today this video is going to be about uh, ancient coins, about the Octos, Dominus Octos, and the Six Devils. So hopefully through this video, you will get an idea of what you want to choose with your ancient coins, those that you can buy. And if you're lucky enough to gacha an Octo from the Legend Banner, uh, hopefully the video is going to help you and teach you how to use your gacha octo effectively. We're going to talk about runes, skills, skill levels that you need, and just, you know, general stuff. But, okay, so, I think we have six devils and eight octos, so that's going to take like an hour each, 14 hours. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, okay, so let's start. Okay, let's start with the six devils and then we'll go to the octos, alright? Six devils, Rafi. Rafi is a support. A very, very good support. Alright, boost attack, reflex, uh, barrier, crit rate, debuff. This is a very rare skill. Remove debuff skill applied to allies. Alright, so let's talk about Rafi. Rafi, Rafi is a support, and as with all supports, the higher their skill level, the more effective they are. And with Rafi, she's a very, very expensive investment. So if you're a new player, I do not suggest going for her, uh, because she's going to need a ton of books to be very good. Uh, and it's just not worth it, right? So, because we're going to get new 5-star supports anyways that are about as good as her. May not be as good. Could be better than her as well. But I wouldn't suggest getting Rafi. Runes for Rafi. Um, basically, anything that makes her tanky. Vital shield runes. And that's it. Angelica. Angelica is um, one of our ancestral ancient coin go-to units. All right. So, as you know, all all um, legends they need the ancient coins to get. So it's a like thousand five per unit. In my time, in my server, we did not have octos, so uh, we have only had six devils, and everybody went for Angelica because she was very good, as in really, really, really very good. Okay, when my server just started. Uh, buff Prohibition, very good skill. Uh, this lethal impact goes up to 50% at high skill levels. Incoming damage. She takes less damage. And she she's like Eden, she uses her HP whenever she hits. All right? um, before she gets hit, the enemy gets cursed. Immune to debuff skill type means she won't get stunned, won't get silenced. Um, won't get poison, burn, whatever. She's immune. Alright? So at high skill levels for Angelica, she is very good. She was very good. Why Why is it a was? Because right now, there are units with energy guard. Okay? And this does max HP damage. So at plus 10, it's 50%. Why is it not good now? Because with Valfern and Memonia, which have energy guard, their HP is not that much, but to get to their HP pool, you need to clear the energy guard first. And by doing damage equal to HP, 50%, it's not even 100%, you're not dealing enough damage to these units to kill them. Which is why she is not a good choice now. She was before these units were released. Okay, in your server, maybe in global and in Europe, you already have these units at the start. So there's no point in getting Angelica at all. I admit she's waifu. Alright. I mean I have a costume. But she she When I started I got Angelica, alright? I have Angelica. Because she was the best choice at the point in time. But you, if you're a new player on a new server, there's no reason for you to go for Angelica. 
okay? Runes for Angelica. Crit damage and crit rate. So fatal and rage. Why? Because that max HP skill can crit. As with a lot of other skills, okay? Dots, burn, poison, uh, decay, they all can crit. So Viola can crit. That's why you use crit runes, rage runes. The more you have of that, the more the crit is going to be. Alright, so that's how it is. That's how the game works. That's the mechanics. Alright, why am I here? Okay. Angelica. We're done with Angelica. Alec. Alec. Alec is a rare unit in the game because he does fixed damage. Alright, so this skill, fixed damage. Why is this good? Because fixed damage goes through 100 defense units. Like Lillian at plus 3, you can get 100% defense where she takes no damage from normal attacks. Alright? Only from fixed additional damage does Lillian take attack uh, damage. Which is why Alec is a counter for Lillian and Arkan. Arkan can get 100% defense as well. So with this skill, Alec just crushes Lillian. As Lillian has a small HP pool, she has, she's like 2k HP. One hit and Lillian is dead. Alright. Alec compared to Sito, Sito is fixed damage as well. Alec has more base attack at first than Sito because of his passives. This passive, before battle, attack 50%. And of course, you got to boost incoming damage. So with this passive, which Sito doesn't have, he has more attack at first. And this is also an interesting skill. When Alex's HP is below 99%, his attack additional damage gets uh, increased by 200%. So it's a lot, right? He's immune to stuns, immune to uh, charms, silence, because of this skill. Attack interference immunity, all right? Would I suggest you getting Alec? It really depends on what you want to do with your team. Alec is awesome against 100% defense units, but he falls off because his attack is not as high as it can be to crush units like Valfern and Memonia with Energy Guard. They have a big HP pool, all right? And the bad thing about fixed damage, fixed damage is fixed. You cannot crit. You cannot crit fixed additional damage, okay? So it's a fixed amount based on the attack. So you can buff his attack. Buffing his crit doesn't help. Um, how do I how do I explain this? So basically, what you're gonna use is double assault runes on that. Like, there's no other way about it. All right, giving him HP just to make him live a little longer is not a good idea. Just let him try and kill stuff. All right. His HP pool is really low. He's very paper. He dies easily. But he's a good counter for specific units. So he's a niche unit that you may consider getting. Alright? In the long term. Maybe after your Valfern, your Memonia are already, you know, skilled up and stuff. You can consider Alec to deal with these problems. Grand Hilda. Grand Hilda, Grand Hilda. Grand Hilda is a tank. Is a defender. She has a very unique skill. Reflective counter. Reflects debuff skill types to enemies. So if people try and debuff Gran, she reflects it to them and they get it instead. It's very unique because I think there's only, she's the only one with it. I'm not sure. I gotta check. But this is an amazing skill. All right, and this is why she was the base of a deck. A team that was based on her and a lot of supports keeping her alive. As long as possible, and she just slowly, slowly killed stuff. Alright. Uh, I'm not saying it's not usable now. In your meta. In our meta, because Global and my Asia server are probably the same. We, all in the, we have the same units. It's just that there are units that counter her so drastically. Like Levia. Uh, one spell cast on her and Grand Hilda is dead. So there's really nothing you can do. As a grand deck, a grand team, a grand Hilda team. 
Alright. She gets incoming damage, minus 30%. Barrier, which is awesome. Very tanky. And at high skill levels, this is unlocked. Alright, max HP, uh, additional damage. Which I explained just now, as with Angelica, it's not that good. Now. She gets Taunt. This is decent. If you just happen to like having a unit that has Taunt and is tanky, Grand is okay to deal with the mages around that we're having now. Um, Valfur and Levia, which are extremely, extremely painful. You don't want that to hit your main team, all of your team. Would I suggest getting again Hilda? No. Uh, she's just off meta. The other tanks do better. Even Lillian. Lillian at plus 3 and she doesn't use legend books. She's a better tank. Arkan, Lucius. These are all much better tanks than Gran. Alright. Runes for Gran. Uh, depending on you, in the past, Gran decks, they had double vital runes on Gran. Because, you know, you wanted her to heal and live long. And she had damage reduction anyways from the supports and herself. Uh, if you want to use her as a standalone without supports helping her out, probably double defense runes. Alright. Double defense runes. And hope she survives. Not recommended, though. Natas. Hmm... Nata says with all six devils, it's a thing of the past. To be honest with you, I've not seen a Natas in Arena on my main account, which is like Grandmaster tier. I've never seen a Natas in months. Why? Because he's easily dragged away by taunts. Don't get me wrong, he's 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 a painful mage, alright? He does he does damage. And if if it's if you're unlucky, he's going to wipe your whole lane. Alright? But the thing is, because he's so one-dimensional, and he only gets this defense after attacking, after casting his spell, he's not a good investment. Alright? He's very one-dimensional, but his range is amazing. It's five tiles. He's immune to debuff, which is amazing. This, this is the best skill in the game. Imuff to, I, immune to debuff skills. Amazing skill. But would I suggest getting Natas? Probably not. He's very paper. His HP pool is very low. I think he's like, yeah, 3002 at max and awaken. And you don't want to put defensive runes on him, like shield or vital. You want to make sure he kills stuff, so you want to go double assault. Or... Uh, maybe one assault, one fatal rune to make use of the crit damage. He's okay, but not recommended to get. All right, I mean most of the six devils are like that. Celia, Celia is an interesting unit because you need to fuse stuff to get her. She is not available for ancient coins. Let me show you. To fuse Celia, what do you have to sacrifice? Sacrifice Astrid, Gunther, Lorang, and Elijah. Elijah is a 5 star unit pull. Gunther is fuse from Leto and Friends. Astrid, you need to mileage pull until you get Asera to be able to actually create. And that's right, you gotta get, uh, what's his name? Alos first. And Lorong is uh, fused from Alicia and friends. Alright, check it out yourself. This is Alos. Asera is a Malich only unit. Uh, it can be painful to get her, even though it's 100 Malich per pool. I think it's like 5 or 10% chance for you to get Asera from that pool. From Malich. Not worth it. Just because of this, it's not worth it to get Celia, alright? I mean, I'm going to talk about her more now, but... Okay, Celia. Celia range is amazing. Her tiles is fucking crazy. Alright? 25 tile range. 5 times 5. What this means is, she basically covers vertically every lane. Like a Viola, because it's 5 tiles. Or a Belgia. 
she hits first, uh, which means hits the front. Alright, as you can see here, this is how you read units and what they do. But her damage is very low. Alright, basically she is a control unit. Her attack at max is 563. HP is alright, 4009. She is a control unit. She curses everything that she touches. Alright. This does not go through debuff immunity, which is why debuff immunity is great. Makes the units unable to receive healing. And she's immune to stun, silence, and whatever. Alright? And she silences at awakening. So she is a control unit that covers a wide area in the game. In the field. Alright, in the field. In the field. Yeah, in the field. Is it worth building a Celia and sacrificing Gunther? Gunther is a very, very, very good unit for campaign, for Evil Castle. So you don't want to sacrifice your Gunther for Celia, especially, okay, in the past, Celia was used with Grand Axe, all right, to provide that control and a little bit more damage because her range was big and the supports were trying to get, keep her alive as well at the same time. So it's sort of like a combo with Grand. And Rafi. Rafi is in the grand deck as well. But it's not practical to start building a grand deck now. Because Levia alone just crushes grand decks. Especially a plus 10 one. Alright, so Ruins for Celia. I would think, I don't have experience with Celia, but I think try and build on the crit rate. And uh, a little bit more assault, a lot more attack. All right. Okay, let's go with Octos. We're gonna do the ancient coins ones first, and then we'll go with the gachas. All right. As I mentioned just now, Sito, Sito, fixed damage dealer. Skip hits the second tile after the front, so he has to jump over something. All right. Fixed additional damage, same as Alec. As a counter, when things touch him, they get burned. And burn is the most painful dot in the game. Definitely. And this is fixed additional damage, so it cannot crit. It does not crit. Okay. So, at high skill levels, Sito is an interesting existence because it's 125% counter of his attack. So what you're going to do is you're going to stack assault runes on him and hope he kills stuff with the counter. All right, He may kill stuff with his normal hit, which is quite painful, actually. All right, It's 150% at plus 10. He also has agility, which makes, makes him a little bit more tankier. 65% agility and he gets more damage with the agility so it's like 65% more attack all right but this is at plus three so you have to put in three legend books legend books guys 800 ancient coins per legend book hefty investment because uh even if you get max rewards for world boss the whole month is like 30 days all right let's take it as 30 days 300 ancient coins for max rewards on world boss and then you add in your arenas normal arena novice arena login bonus where you get 150 ancient coins really depends all right ancient coins is a very rare commodity in the game so you need to think and consider carefully what you use your ancient coins on all right i'm not saying sito is bad he is a very niche unit and in the distant future i may get sito you know just because of fixed damage Right, fixed damage is great against defense units. Right, gets attack interference. Like I said, you know what he means by now. He is a very niche unit like Alec. His attack is a bit lower than Alec because Alec has the passive, but his counter is amazing. I think if Velja touches uh, Sito or Levia does touches him, they both burn to death at high skill levels. I think this is what my theory is. This is how it's gonna work. But yeah, Sito is very niche. It really depends on what you want. And it's not something that you can prioritize first. Alright? I mean, his combat image is badass, man. There's a dragon, you know? 
Runes! I will go double assault. Because fixed damage cannot crit. Alright. Double assault with agility substat. So you get more attack bonus. Alright. Belioth. Ah, an old love of mine. I use Belioth. I still do. Uh, meta in my server before Season 2 Octos, like Belgia, Belfern were released. It was Bombermans. So what, what is a Bomberman meta? Uh, Belioth plus your three Suicide Bombers. Wiggle, Sakan, Chocla. It was very, very strong and very easy to climb the ranks with that kind of a team. Because Skeletons, they counter based on the enemy's attack. So the stronger your enemy is, the more damage they take when they hit the Skeletons. All right? That's the general gist of it. Her buffs are very decent. Crit rate, crit damage. Support times 30% attack. So, interestingly, Belayev buff does go on to Lillian. Lillian, which is supposed to be immune to buffs. Which means you can't buff Lillian. But this skill can. Alright? Lillian can turn into a skeleton when she dies, and she also gets the attack boost. Alright, so it's a very interesting mechanic in the game, where she actually is able to boost Lillian and make her a little bit more painful. Alright? Uh, she's immune to debuff skill type, which is amazing. It's good for dealing with Asmode. Would I... Recommend you getting Belioth. What runes? Okay, let's go with runes first. What runes for Belioth? Just general tanky stuff, you know. A shield rune and a vital rune. Keep her alive. She doesn't have a heal. So you don't go with... Uh, Fatal and Rage runes. Which can crit. They can, Heals can crit. Alright, guys. I will recommend getting her now. Because uh, there are going to be better supports in the future. And wasting ancient coins on Belioth now is not a good idea. Advantages of Belioth, she is amazing for Guild War. Alright, Guild War, having a Belioth in your formation for defense is going to make your, team, your opponents think twice. Like, oh shit, she, there's a Belioth. Because as you defend, you always go first on a defending team. So your buffs will definitely come up first. And Belioth buffs create skeletons, which counter. Alright, and it's fixed. Alright, fixed damage. Uh, she is countered now by Valfern. Uh, because Valfern has a huge HP pool. So unless maybe you have like 3 or 4 skeletons there. Uh, Valfern is not going to die to a single skeleton, alright? Same with Mammonia. Valfern, Mammonia is not going to die to a single skeleton as well. You have to have a couple probably to be able to even break the energy guard. Anyway, she has a users. She's amazing in Guild War, definitely. The most annoying existence in Guild War. Alright. Mammonia. Okay, Mammonia. Lots of people are getting Mammonia. Lots of people are getting Valfern now. 1,500 ancient coins for a tanky existence that does damage at high skill levels. Mammonia has energy guard. Like I said before, it's based on max HP. And it's a bigger percentage than her max HP. So it makes her more tanky. Alright, and it restores itself. If you don't break the energy guard, she's just going to keep regening, alright? High skill levels. 350% max HP. That is a lot. Alright, that is a lot of energy guard. Next skill, Nullifier. Before battle, alright? This is on before battle. After she gets attacked... The enemy's buffs are gone. Alright? After the enemy damages her, after their buffs are gone. Alright? So this is pretty nice because most of the time, unless it's an Eden or Vel a buffed Velja, Mammonia isn't going to die from one shot. So it's a decent and amazing skill for her. This. This skill is... A very unique skill. It ignores enemies incoming damage reduction. So let's say a seer has 50% at 
at plus 10, right? Incoming damage reduction. It ignores that at, uh, that skill and deals additional damage through it. So Seer becomes less tanky against a mammal. Alright, so it's an amazing skill. This skill is also useful for Arcstar. You can deal a ton of damage to Arcstar because the damage reduction is gone. So she does quite a bit there. Alright, she's going to help with Arcstar. The world boss. And of course, immune to debuff skill type. Runes for Mammonia. Mm, you can go two ways, or you can do a hybrid. Double HP, double vital runes for big energy guard numbers. Or double assault to use as a DPS if you don't need a tank. Because she does hurt, alright? Don't get me wrong, she hits two squares from the front. She hurts. She kills stuff, alright? Especially at higher skill levels. Alright, so... At plus 8. 300%. Which is huge. Alright, but... Legend books are a very big investment, alright? Keep that in mind. Legend books are a big investment. You need to think about that. So when you get a Mammonia, you have to invest books into her. 800 ancient coins per book from the honor shop. Every month you can buy two. You have to invest on Mammonia once you get her, alright? At low plus, she is not that good. Okay, probably until... Okay, because at low plus, her, her guard is big. Okay, let's say 250% at 3. But she's not dealing that much damage, so she's not really a threat. She's just, just a, a tanky uh, unit that stands where she needs to be hit. But at high plus, when her damage skills are increased, she becomes very potent. Okay, and very destructive as a unit. Alright, so would you would I recommend you get Mammonia? Um, depends. If you need something like uh, what her skill set skill set does, go for it. She's very nice. She's quite strong, and at plus ten, practically very few units are able to one shot her. Alright, very few. But she's a heavy investment, keep that in mind. She's cute. Waifu material. Oh my Yeah, let me let me drink a little bit of water. I would suggest vital and assault runes for Memonia though. Just to have a, the best of both worlds. Could be different, it's up to you. Valfern. Valfern probably is the star of all the Octos in the game right now. Why? Because you can fit Valfern into any team. Right? Any team can make use of a Valfern. Valfern is a mage, which of course you need the the round the the charging time two rounds. It's a skip, three times three tile, which is amazing. The AOE is huge. Uh, this skill is not that important, but can be good when you have like maybe a combo with a Celia. Increase the damage he does. At higher skill levels, this increases as well, so decent damage. This skill is the most interesting one. He gets more damage the more number of things die. So the more things that are dead on the battlefield on both sides, the more damage he does. All right, this skill gets level up and and gets crazy at higher levels. Uh, energy guard like Memonia, same thing, HP. And then you get energy gun, alright? It regens itself too. Defense plus 95%. Defense plus 95%. Why is this good? Because Jin, 
um, Aaron. There, I don't think Aaron and let me check. I want it to be accurate, right? So let's check. Okay, so as you all know, defense reflects. I mean, defense reduces damage taken. So with that skill on Valfern, reflex on him deal lesser damage because he gets defense plus 95% and that's huge. Alright. You, you can possibly get 100% if you have a defense substat on your rune. He's just a tanky mage that does a lot of damage, alright guys? He needs graves to deal more damage. Aoe is good. He's tanky, he's great for campaign, great for evil castle, very strong unit, alright? Uh, runes for Valfern. Okay, before you get uh, higher energy guard levels, which is probably plus 9, plus 9 is 300%, before that at plus 2 it's 250%. It's not it's it's not bad. It's just that at plus two, his damage is still twenty percent per grave. All right. So you you want to skill up Valfern enough until plus five, where it's thirty percent, which is quite quite decent already, and even better at higher levels. But you 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 want to use assault runes first until you can make use of this plus nine energy guard where having hp runes make him incredibly tanky a lot more tanky why you use assault runes first before you skill him up very high because you want him to kill stuff right he has the highest turnaround potential in the game if you're losing a few more units than your opponent having valfern can potentially turn around the whole fight in arena all right because one explosion and tons of shit die all right and his attack is increased by a number of graves so if you can see it he is very very strong all right you can see how it works it's very very strong okay valfern will i recommend getting valfern yes probably the go-to unit among all the ancient coin buyables very strong. But I recommend you going double assault first. And as your Valfern gets stronger, you, you invest skill books into him. You can switch maybe one assault, one vital rune. And maybe even at plus 10, you want to go and use him as a tank and just, just fucking give him double vital runes or something. Alright. Do keep in mind, Eden one shots Valfern, even though he is, he's at plus 10. Alright. Valger with a lot of buffs probably one shots him too. Not sure, never seen it. I don't have a Valger, sadly. Okay, let's go with our OG, our original Octos, Lucius and Levia in Asia. All right, we didn't we didn't get these two. We got these two first. Lucius, everybody knows about Lucius, right? Best tank in the game, by far. 5 star, level 1, non-awakened, still the best tank in the game. Why? Because of Death Guard. I'm going to skim around Lucius, but this skill alone makes him the best tank in the game. Alright. And higher skill levels, this increases. Alright, it's like plus 10, it's like 6 times, 5 times. That's, that's a lot of hits. Alright. To be able to even break through that Death Guard. It's insane. He is by far the best tank in the game. And uh, in comparison, probably the best unit in the game for high tier arena. Alright. Resurrection. I don't think I need to explain what this is. If you've fought the Lucius before, you know what it does. Alright. But once he resurrects, he can't get it again. Alright. This skill. Enemy current stage HP times 15%. Makes Lucius deal a little bit more damage not so useless in other things does a little bit more damage with skill ups 
uh, mesochism, very high percentage, just on awakening. All right, thirty six percent max HP. He is the best tank in the game, guys. Definitely, probably the best unit in the game. Would I recommend scaling up Lucius? No. What for? Why do you need to scale up Lucius? He does his job fine at plus zero. Right? Why waste your books on something that's not priority? Okay? Uh, runes for Lucius. Lucius can use any damn rune you want. Whatever you want. Personally, right now, I am using Fatal and Rage runes for crit rate and crit damage because... For some reason, some of my fights end up with Lucius one on one, maybe a Valfern or one on one, a Levia, mostly one on one Valfern, and there is a chance my Lucius might one on one and win a Valfern, all right, with enough damage. So that's why I use what I use on him. I don't recommend that. That's up to you. Uh, normally you would go double HP, uh, one HP, one shield. It doesn't matter. He already has this skill. He doesn't. He doesn't die that easily, all right. Lucius is very strong. If you're lucky enough to get Lucius, good. Uh, congratulations. You got the best tank in the game. Levia. Levia is a mage. Levia is a mage that does fixed damage based on max HP. Okay. Fixed damage based on max HP. So basically, anything without energy guard dies straight away at plus zero. 200% of the max HP. So let's say it's a Sigmund with like 6,000 HP. The Levia is going to deal 12,000 to him. He dies straight away. All right? This surrounding targets, what does this mean? This cross shape center is the main target. Anything around is surrounding target. So 75% max HP, they do not die. So what you want to do is you get her to plus three and the max HP damage increases to 125%. Four surrounding targets and they die. Definitely die unless it's an energy guard unit. Okay. Instant death. Once she casts on her, she also gets defense uh, before she attacks, which means when she's casting, she gets the defense, and then it lasts for four turns, which is makes makes her a little bit more tanky. Okay. At high skill levels, plus ten, the range is increased. It's freaking scary. All right, this tile is really really scary. Anything around the main target dies. The damage is amazing. Max HP times 450%. What does this mean? It means at plus 10, Levia insta kills Valfern or Mammonia. Why? Because their energy guard at plus 10, Valfern at plus 10 has energy guard at 350% of max HP. Which means the total of both the HP and energy guard added together is 450%. So with this skill, she instant kills Valfern or Mammonia. Alright, so plus 10 level is a thing guys, very very strong. She gets curse counter. Anything that hits level gets cursed. Unless they are immune, this is very very good because it's before she gets attacked. All right, it lowers their damage, lowers their shields, their defense. It's it's, it's ridiculous. All right, and, and at high level, you get this. Remove already applied stat boost type, which is even scarier, all right, before getting attacked. She has Meso, healing on normal hit. So as to a certain extent, she can tank, especially with incoming damage minus 65% at plus 8. Very tanky existence. And she is immune. Now this is like... Levia is super strong, guys. You have a Levia. Congratulations again. You probably have one of the strongest mage in the game. Okay. Runes for Levia. Uh, double shield. Double defense. Why? Because you want to make use of this. 
you can get 100% with double shield. Uh, single shield rune probably not gonna hit 35% defense. So double shield to, to make the best out of it. You can go with 1 HP, 1 defense if you don't mind. It's entirely up to you. No need to use assault runes on her, it doesn't matter because she does max HP, fixed damage. It doesn't matter at all. Crit doesn't work, it's fixed damage as I said before. Just go defensive runes on her, you don't want her to die so easily. Alright, next we have Valja. Valja is our newest unit in Asia. In your server, she came with the release. She is a Viola Tile Octo. She does a ton of damage at plus zero. She is like... She means damage, right? She does damage. Because... She's just painful. Before she hits the enemy, she removes their buffs. Um, damage, you know, just just damage, man. Okay, uh, this skill is interesting. Before battle is a permanent skill, permanent passive. Crit damage before battle times 15% crit rate boost. So whatever amount of crit damage she has before battle, depending on your runes, increases the crit rate, alright? So... Probably at 300% it's like 30-40% crit rate. My math isn't good, do it yourself. Uh, death Guard. Velja has Death Guard off before she hits the enemy, so she will not die to any bombs or any skeletons. It's impossible to kill her when she hits bombs or skeletons. Because this Death Guard just blocks it, alright? Even if it's fixed damage counter, she doesn't die, alright? There's no way she dies from being countered from fixed damage. She does die if it's like, uh, how do I say this? Maybe a burn that lasts long, I think. Like Sito, like I mentioned just now. She may die if uh, Sito is high skill enough with enough attack. But the, the death guard lasts for two turns, alright? So it's one hit. She will not die to bombs, okay? Or skeletons. Which is why this is a pretty strong skill. Velja is a damage unit, and if you have her, good for you. Her tile is amazing, she clears every last row. Uh, good combos for her. You, you only have one choice of runes for her. You double crit damage, okay? So you can increase this. And then uh, get more damage through it. Uh, buff her a lot to make sure she one shot stuff. Very very strong unit. I I I, mean, I can't recommend you get a Gacha Octo right. It's it's all about luck. So if you have her, good for you guys. Last one, Asmode. Okay, Asmode. Asmode is a support. As you can see here, support with a harem. Asmod is a unique unit in the game. Okay, let me drink some water again. He charms himself to support the enemies. Alright, basically that's their logic. So basically, he is going to buff the enemy. They're, they're not they're not a buff. It's just that he buffs the enemy to deal damage to them. So basically, he's a damage dealer that does not use a turn because he's a support. Okay? What this means is you can chain supports because as you know, once your warrior, your defender, or your mage, uh, not your mage, your, your warrior and defender, once they hit, your turn is over and it goes to the next next guy, right? The opponent. Asmod skips this. He deals damage without you having to lose your turn. Alright? Basically with this skill, when supporting the enemy, so he will support the enemy and he will take their life. Enemies current HP times 20% additional damage. Alright. He also takes their buffs. Which is interesting mechanic. 
He takes the buff for himself. Um, reduce defense, uh, and he charms whatever that hits him, alright? Before he gets hit. Alright, so it's permanent. It's, 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 it's okay. I mean, debuff immune units do exist, but for those that don't have it, they get charmed. Is Asmode usable? Yes, definitely. He's very unique in his skill set. But you need at least plus 6 on Asmode. Because unless you have like super, super godly runes. Okay, runes for Asmode. Double crit damage. Double rage runes. You can't insta-kill stuff at low skill levels, it's 20%. So you, you have like, even if you have like 400% crit damage, it's, it's not enough to kill stuff with Asmode. So you need higher skill levels, minimum plus 6 on Asmode to use him properly with decent rage runes. He's a big investment. Six books is two mo three months, three months of playing and spending it all on him. But it's amazing a mechanic, all right. His tower is amazing as well. It, it's 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 a I think it's a facing front cross. So whatever is across him, in a cross shape, they all get damaged. Okay. Double rage runes on Asmo. Uh, to make him usable. Plus 6 at least. Anything lower, you'll see mediocre results. Plus 6 at least, alright? Because 30% times uh, times 3 is like 90% damage. And with a little buff, you can get even more and it's an insta-kill. It, it really depends. Osmo is a very unique unit that doesn't use your turn. Alright, if you happen to have Osmo... Uh, he's not good at first, definitely not, but after some investment, he is usable and actually really, really strong. Okay, at plus 10, it's 40% current HP. Do know that Asmode does damage based on current HP, alright, but this can crit. Okay, so the higher the number, the better it is. And you can insta-kill stuff, if you crit above 100% current HP, right? It's all about math. Alright, so if you happen to get Asmo, don't be sad. In the future, after a few months of investment, he is going to be very, 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 very strong. Okay? Okay, I think that's it for our Legend Reviews. I'm going to finish the video by telling you guys how to farm Ancient Coins. Once again, if you didn't re watch my newbie guide, please watch it. There's a lot of useful info in there. Arena, you get ancient coins from Arena based on your ranking. The higher you are, the more you get, the more ancient coins you get. Right? I'm normally Grandmaster 1, you get 166 a week. Novice Arena, Novice Arena, same thing, same, same shit. I'm normally GM2, GM3, so I get like 70 something a week. Alright, so multiply that by 4 weeks in a month, and then you get the number you get a month. World Boss, World Boss, uh, 10 Ancient Coins a day, alright, do your World Boss, boys, really. Even if you fail, like, terribly, you still get 2 Ancient Coins, well, why not try? Try your best, alright, every day. What else? Login. You get Ancient Coins from Login as well. You get it once a month. 150 Ancient Coins. Alright. What else? Guild War. You get Guild War rewards too. Uh, based on your season. So it's after 2 weeks. You'll get, like, depends on your Guild rank. Ancient Coins. For, get a Guild, guys. Get a Guild. Uh, what else? Campaign. Quests. You get a lot of ancient coins from quests, right? 125 is a lot. Do your campaign, guys. Evil castle. Clear your evil castle. Clear as high as you can. Get all the achievements. Ancient coins. Okay? 
Anyway, this wraps up the video. Hope you enjoyed this pretty long video. It wasn't 14 hours, but it's probably an hour. I'm sorry, I'm trying to make it shorter, but I can't. I need to be Tara. That's my style. Hey guys, if you like the video, like, subscribe, comment if you have questions. I'm out. Ciao.